So, I had a plan to do an April Fool's Day video. I really did. It was a little last minute, but I was going to go on fanfiction.net or something and look up really bad Shield Hero fanfics and just read them until I went insane. But I started doing it and, I don't know, it just wasn't as funny as I thought it'd be. Maybe it was still a little funny, but my stuff generally has to live up to my standards first, and this was a no-go. Plus, roasting individual people has never been the goal of my content. I'm focused on the art itself and what we can say about it. You'll notice, like in The Souls of Roche Folk, I never once mentioned Terraformers' as author by name. In fact, to this day, I still don't remember it. Apparently, the author of the Rising of the Shield Heroes light novels might be a girl. That, that is to say, whether or not the author of a particular work is a fascist or a sexist legitimately has never mattered. Intentionality has never mattered. Just what the text does when put into this wacky society of ours. It'd be weird to start singling out individual authors now, especially like authors that are obviously kids and obviously just want to have fun writing about a new cool edgy anime they saw. If I'm being honest, it's been hard to find anything funny lately. At the time of writing, it's been exactly two weeks since I've last been in an airport. Two weeks since my university abruptly sent its entire student body home amidst the most serious global public health crisis in a century. Two weeks since I've seen the outside world. And for those two weeks, I've been more or less forced to wonder if every cough, every sneeze, every sniffle, every time I felt winded going up the stairs too fast is indeed a sign that the plague has finally come. We're living through an era of unprecedented human suffering. A suffering so white-hot and omnipresent that for once, almost no amount of privilege can shield you from its heat. Our governments and systems have not only failed us, but actively wished to sacrifice our lives for their own survival. They tell you to do your part to flatten the curve, and you do. You've perhaps already developed a compulsive hand-washing habit, but hand-washing and Lysol spray don't seem to stop the numbers on TV from going up. It doesn't stop the record number of people who have lost their jobs. It doesn't change the fact that an entire generation is going to enter the world with no economic prospects whatsoever. A again, it doesn't change what will surely be the single largest erosion of civil liberties in the world since 9-11. It doesn't change liberal democracy's slow and steady march towards right populism. I love a good dystopia. It's been my favorite genre of fiction since high school. Years after people getting sick of the oversaturation of YA dystopias, I still crave more. I don't hold disdain towards Divergent because it's one in a long line of Hunger Games knockoffs, but because it's thematically shallow. 1984 and Brave New World almost single-handedly shaped my interests in fiction as societal commentary and have had a huge effect on my personal writing. But I've realized all dystopian fiction has one subtle flaw. They're all obvious. For the sake of narrative clarity, disaster and corruption have to be exaggerated to the point where anyone can understand the critique and where it's placed. Satire requires a clarity of purpose and target lest it be mistaken for and contribute to that which it intends to satirize. I honestly have no idea who said that. In fiction, oppression is so abnormal, suffering so inhumane, injustice so glaring, that a spectator has no choice but to cry out for relief. Reality isn't so kind. Reality politely informs you that over the course of the next few months, at least 100,000 people in your country are going to die drowning in their own fluids, and then demands you see that as normal. Reality points out that the people who had the capacity to stop this from happening instead saw an opportunity to enrich themselves, and then requests you swallow the fact that these individuals never face jail time like a champ. Reality shows you individuals with unimaginable amounts of wealth hiding in secure bunkers, telling those that generate that wealth on poverty wages to work until they contract a deadly disease, after which they will be fired and replaced. Reality then points a gun to your head and forces you to repeat the words, this is just how things are, again and again until you believe it. I wonder how media critics would respond to a dystopia with an April Fool's Day. This is a message from your organization. We want to take the opportunity to share some information with you. We have just been informed that a team member has been diagnosed with COVID-19. We are following the guidance of local health authorities. The team member last worked on March 19, 2020. Rest assured that we have detailed measures in place to address this issue and that we are operating under the guidance of the health department as well as food safety authorities. 
We are working to identify any team members who may have had prolonged contact with the diagnosed team member and will communicate with them individually. The store has been completing enhanced sanitation measures daily and out of an abundance of caution will perform an additional cleaning and disinfection procedure throughout the facility. We are supporting the diagnosed team member, who is in quarantine, and will not return to the store until they are cleared by the criteria set by the health department. To confirm your receipt of this message, please call 1 8 0 0 3 2